Οι άνδρες της πράσινης αστυνομίας περιπολούν κάθε μέρα πάνω από το δάσος του Ατλαντικού στη Βραζιλία ή τουλάχιστον σε ό,τι έχει απομείνει από αυτό. Είναι ένας από τους πιο σημαντικούς βιότοπους του κόσμου, καταφύγιο σπάνιων φυτών και θηλαστικών. Παρόλο που φτάνει μέχρι την Αργεντινή και την Παραγουάη, το δάσος του Ατλαντικού είναι σήμερα το 1 δέκατο από ό,τι ήταν στο παρελθόν. Η υλοτομία καθώς και η αποψήλωση της ζούγκλας για βοσκότο για καλλιέργειες μείωσαν την έκταση του δραματικά. Η πράσινη αστυνομία της ζούγκλας προσέχει να μην γίνει άλλη ζημιά. Ούτε στις κρατικές, ούτε στις ιδιωτικές εκτάσεις. Dentro da modalidade de patrulhamento aéreo, nós fazemos um trabalho conjunto com o terrestre, em que é, por a, o patrulhamento aéreo é localizar os pontos, né, principalmente de desmate, que é um crime previsto na legislação ambiental brasileira, né, e é que as equipes terrestres vão até esse ponto e verificar, fiscalizar se está autorizado ou não. A missão nossa é preservar e conservar e defender esse, esse patrimônio que não é individual e ele é coletivo, ele é de todos. Simera, megala comatia tu dasus tu atlantiku, ine idiotika, que ta ekmetalevo de eteries. Αγοράστηκαν με χρήματα που έδωσαν η Chevron, η General Motors και η American Electric Power, η Αμερικάνικη Εταιρεία Ηλεκτρισμού. 18 εκατομμύρια δολάρια για 18.600 εκτάρια ζούγκλας, τα οποία οι τρεις εταιρείες θα εκμεταλλευτούν για 40 χρόνια. Αλλά για ποιο λόγο η Chevron, η General Motors και η American Electric Power επενδύουν σε δέντρα. Θέλουν να τα κόψουν το αντίθετο. Θέλουν να τα προστατέψουν όσο το δυνατόν περισσότερο. Δεν θέλουν να κοπεί ούτε ένα κλάδι. Γιατί η ικανότητα των φυτών να απορροφούν διοξίδιο του άνθρακα από την ατμόσφαιρα σήμερα μπορεί να αποτιμηθεί σε χρήμα και να αποφέρει μεγάλα κέρδη. But we surely are looking for benefit from what has been done. That's an environmental benefit. And and again, I I always go down to the ground here on the notion of what are we trying to accomplish? Are we trying to make a positive environmental effect? And if we are, and and if there's an, a fee associated with anything that you do in a constructive way, then that fee ought to be granted, whether you did it a year ago. Six months ago, or or half a decade ago, the environment has received that benefit. It hasn't gone away. Σας παρουσιάζουμε τη νέα μεγάλη αγορά, την αγορά του άνθρακα. What do you mean, uh, trading greenhouse gas emissions reductions? How could you create uh, an asset that could be traded out of something you can't smell, touch, or feel? And highly conceptual. You know, 
how can you do that? And, um, and therefore, people would often ask, what are you talking about? You know, it was hard to get your head around because if you're trading oil or gas, it's something that's tangible or orange juice or whatever. Carbon is a commodity that is very new. Um, it only has really started getting, gaining traction in the last five years. Um, the market size of carbon, the global market size of carbon in 2004 was about $400 million, which is pretty small compared to other global commodities. In 2009, the market size of carbon was about $127 billion and growing. We want to make sure that these trees are actually valued for the carbon they store. And if we do that, suddenly these trees will be worth more alive than they are dead. And that will create a real revolution in the landscape of the tropical world. Είναι λογικό να αναρωτιέστε πως είναι δυνατόν η αγορά να εμπορεύεται αέρα πραγματικό και για την ακρίβεια διοξίδιο του άνθρακα. Πάμε λοιπόν να δούμε από κοντά πως λειτουργεί αυτό το σύστημα. Όλοι οι σοβαροί επιστήμονες λένε πως η κλιματική αλλαγή είναι ήδη εδώ. Επισημαίνουν πως αν θέλουμε να συνεχίσουμε να ζούμε σε αυτό το πλανήτη, θα πρέπει να μειώσουμε δραστικά τα αέρια που προκαλούν το φαινόμενο του θερμοκηπίου μέχρι το 2050. Ένα από αυτά είναι και το διοξίδιο του άνθρακα. Αυτό σημαίνει ότι στις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες, για παράδειγμα, που είναι ένας από τους μεγαλύτερους ρηπαντές στον κόσμο, οι εκπομπές διοξιδίου του άνθρακα θα πρέπει να μειωθούν ως και 80%. Το θέμα είναι ότι η ολόκληρη η παγκόσμια οικονομία βασίζεται στην ενέργεια που παράγεται από την καύση ορυκτών καυσίμων. Όλα τα εργοστάσια που κατασκευάζουν ό,τι καταναλώνουμε, τα πλοία και τα φορτηγά που τα μεταφέρουν, τα αυτοκίνητά μας, τα κτίρια, οι συσκευές, σχεδόν τα πάντα, απελευθερώνουν στην ατμόσφαιρα διοξίδιο του άνθρακα. Πώς λοιπόν θα σταματήσουμε να μολύνουμε χωρίς να γυρίσουμε πίσω στο 19ο αιώνα? Είναι απλό, λένε οι αγορές. Εάν μετατραπεί η προστασία του περιβάλλοντος σε business, τότε ο πλανήτης ίσως έχει μια ευκαιρία να σωθεί. What we found is that universally, for better or for worse, people are motivated by profit. It's going to take time to transition from uh, dirty, uh, polluting energy sources like coal and oil uh, towards clean energy sources like wind and solar. But it doesn't take very much time to stop deforestation. It's just a matter of providing the financial incentives. And you don't really have to build an infrastructure or new technology or new systems. And so this is a way for us immediately to get a handle on the problem at the scale that's necessary. Now, if there isn't going to be a financial incentive to change our behavior, we're not going to change our behavior. That's just the way the world works. Αυτό που έκανε η αγορά ήταν ότι όρισε μια τιμή στο διοξίδιο του άνθρακα. Πώς όμως μπορεί να γίνει αυτό. Πρώτα χρειαζόμαστε ένα καπάκι. 
να συμφωνήσουν δηλαδή οι κυβερνήσει των βιομηχανοποιημένων κρατών σε ένα ανώτατο όριο εκπομπών ρήπων που θα μειώνεται σταδιακά χρόνο με το χρόνο. Μετά δημιουργούμε μονάδες άνθρακα. Μια μονάδα άνθρακα είναι μια άδεια που επιτρέπει σε μια βιομηχανία να ρηπαίνει με ένα τόνο διοξιδίου του άνθρακα την ατμόσφαιρα. Τις μονάδες άνθρακα τις μοιράζουμε στις ρηπογόνες βιομηχανίες εντελώς δωρεάν. Κάθε χρόνο, καθώς ακολουθούμε το σχέδιο για το στόχο μας, θα υπάρχουν λιγότερες και λιγότερες άδειε. Με τον καιρό, πρωτοπόρες εταιρείε θα επενδύσουν σε πράσινη τεχνολογία και δεν θα χρειάζεται να ξοδεύουν τις άδειε που παίρνουν. Αφού τους περισσεύουν, μπορούν να τις πουλήσουν σε μια άλλη ρηπογόνο εταιρεία που τις χρειάζεται. Και καθώς οι άδειε θα σπανίζουν, η τιμή τους όλο και θα ανεβαίνει. Και εδώ μπαίνει στο παιχνίδι η αγορά. Χώρες, εταιρείες, επενδυτές, μεσίτες, κερδοσκόποι αγοράζουν και πουλούν μονάδες διοξιδίου του άνθρακα στα χρηματιστήρια του Λονδίνου και του Σικάγου, όπως ακριβώς τα έκαναν με το ρύζι, το πετρέλαιο, το στάρι ή το χρυσό. Η τιμή του αερίου διαμορφώνεται με τον κλασικό νόμο της προσφοράς και της ζήτησης. Τον Ιούνιο του 2010 η τιμή του ήταν περίπου 15 ευρώ ο τόνος. If the... US and other countries like Australia and like Japan um, and the EU continue to move forward and um, the EU already has been a, a leader um, then the market could easily become worth one or two or three trillion dollars by the year 2020 um, but that depends on political decisions that are made. Όπως καταλαβαίνετε λοιπόν, είναι πολύ σημαντικό για τις ρηπογόνες εταιρείες να έχουν μονάδες άνθρακα για να αντισταθμίζουν τις εκπομπές τους και να παίζουν στην αγορά. Το να αποκτήσεις μονάδες άνθρακα μπορεί να επιτευχθεί όχι μόνο αλλάζοντας την τεχνολογία που χρησιμοποιείς, αλλά επενδύοντας σε κάποιο άλλο πράσινο project κάποιου άλλου, κάπου άλλου. Για παράδειγμα, μπορείς να είσαι μια ρηπογόνος βιομηχανία στον τόπο σου, αλλά να επενδύσεις στο να μπουν φίλτρα που θα περιορίζουν τη μόλυνση σε μια άλλη εταιρεία στην Ινδία. Ή μπορείς να επενδύσεις σε μια ζούγκλα στη Βραζιλία, όπως έκαναν η Chevron, η General Motors και η American Electric Power. So instead of reducing emissions here in the U.S. to meet that declining cap, they would purchase a pollution credit from another country, for example, that had reduced their emissions. So instead of a coal company in Virginia reducing their emissions, they would buy a carbon credit from let's say Brazil or Cameroon that said we're going to reduce our emissions by a certain amount. Για να αντιληφθείτε πως βλέπει τα δέντρα η αγορά, θα πρέπει να τα φανταστείτε ως φυσικούς απορροφητήρες διοξιδίου του άνθρακα. Κάθε δέντρο έχει την ικανότητα να παγιδεύει στο εσωτερικό του μια συγκεκριμένη ποσότητα ανάλογα με τον όγκο του. Αυτή είναι η κυνηγή του άνθρακα. Εργάζονται για την Αμερικάνικη μη κυβερνητική οργάνωση TNC που ασκεί την επιστημονική εποπτεία του project. Προσπαθούν να υπολογίσουν πόσο άνθρακα περιέχει κάθε ένα από αυτά τα δέντρα στα οποία επένδυσαν οι εργοδότες τους, η Chevron, η General Motors και η American Electric Power. Então todas as árvores que qualquer árvore que que entra no no projeto, elas são elas são ela existe uma marcação como essa, ela aqui tem uma ficha, tem um número da árvore. Então a gente sabe que essa árvore aqui, a gente identifica qual a espécie que ela é, né? Nesse caso aqui, a espécie aqui é uma guaricica e tem um número dela, né? Isso aqui é anotado numa ficha de campo e depois passado para o computador, né? Então, na próxima medição, a gente sabe que, que a gente sabe exatamente 
a espécie, a identificação dela, então a gente consegue associar quanto que ela tinha na primeira medição com quanto foi medida na segunda medição. Então é assim que a gente acaba determinando o crescimento da floresta. Έχουν υπολογίσει πως τα δέντρα αυτά μπορούν να απορροφήσουν περίπου 384.264 τόνους διοξιδίου του άνθρακα τα επόμενα 40 χρόνια. Αυτή η ποσότητα διοξιδίου του άνθρακα ανήκει στις τρεις εταιρείες, που έτσι αντισταθμίζουν τις εκπομπές τους και παίζουν στην αγορά. Το διοξίδιο του άνθρακα που απελευθερώνουν εκεί απορροφάται από τα δέντρα τους εδώ. And there's nothing wrong with that because it doesn't matter where in the world you reduce greenhouse gas emissions, it has the same impact on the global climate. It's not U.S. warming, and it surely isn't Greece warming. It's global warming, and we need to address it in that sense. So the environment, if the environment had a voice, the environment doesn't care about which coal-fired utility is emitting more than the next from a, from a carbon perspective. What the environment cares about is the cap. Αυτή είναι η λογική με την οποία λειτουργεί η αγορά του άνθρακα. Πάμε τώρα να δούμε τι γίνεται στην πράξη. Η American Electric Power, η Αμερικάνικη Εταιρεία Ηλεκτρισμού, είναι ο αυτοκράτορας του Λιθάνθρακα στις Ηνωμένες Πολιτείες. Μία από τις μεγαλύτερες ρηπογόνες βιομηχανίας του κόσμου. Ο μεγαλύτερος παραγωγός ηλεκτρισμού στην Αμερική, με 80 εργοστάσια παραγωγής ενέργειας, εκ των οποίων τα 50 και ένα Λιθάνθρακα. It is a worldwide impossibility to not burn coal and have electricity, which allows humankind to advance. The electrification of America and the world has allowed humans more time to think and move forward. Ένα από τα βασικότερα εργοστάσια της εταιρείας βρίσκεται στα Απαλάχια Όρη. Το Mountaineer καταναλώνει περίπου 9.000 τόνους λιθάνθρακα τη μέρα για να παράξει 1.300 MW ηλεκτρικού ρεύματος. Μόνο του θα μπορούσε να καλύψει τις ανάγκες μιας πόλης 800.000 ανθρώπων. This is one of the most unique products known to humankind. And to say, well, let's all have some sun and some wind and not do any of that. Let's all use less of it. That's replaced by human power. So I, I think that's just a terrible argument when people say those kinds of things. China's going to burn coal. Russia's going to burn coal. India's going to burn coal. The European Union is going to burn coal. The United States is going to burn coal. We all need to do it in the most environmentally responsible way that we can. Η εταιρεία ηλεκτρισμού που επενδύει στα δέντρα του Αμαζονίου έχει κατηγορηθεί αρκετές φορές για συστηματική ρήπανση του περιβάλλοντος. Το 2005 υποχρεώθηκε να καταβάλει 81 εκατομμύρια δολάρια σε αποζημιώσεις ενώ το 2001 δεν δίστασε να αγοράσει στο τριπλάσιο της αξίας τους όλα τα σπίτια των κατοίκων ενός χωριού που επρόκειτο να τις κάνουν μήνυση. You ever hear the term third world country? Our government, the United States of America, has elected to have a third world country in this country, and it's called Appalachia. Η οικογένεια του κυρίου Λάρι Γκίψον ζει στα Απαλάχια Όρη από το 1700. Περισσότεροι από 300 συγγενείς του είναι θαμένοι στο νεκροταφείο του χωριού. Birds on my place. The worst, worst air that's ever been tested up here. And even the birds can't live here. Okay, but you know, 
It's not my dorm. When my family lived here, we had the best air ever. We didn't destroy the land, we farmed the land. These people are here that's coming in here and blowing these lands all to hell. They're not even interested about living on the land or even with the land. They're interested in profit. Olario odigouse pros the gorifi tu vunu, i opia tora den i parhi. Την ανατείναξε η American Electric Power για να έχει πρόσβαση στα κοιτάσματα του Λιθάνδρακα από πάνω προς τα κάτω. I call it the belly of the beast simply because if there's a hell on earth it would be something like this. The most powerful country in the world, they tell me. The most educated country in the world, they tell me. And they can't tell me that they don't know what the most barbaric form of energy called coal does to people. I've been losing a big, big part of my family from cancer. The biggest killer here in this, this country, this part of the country, is cancer. And no, nobody seems to be finding it overwhelmingly unusual. And then when I talk about it, the people say, well, Larry is the prophet of it. But what's the difference if I kill you with my 45 or we'll kill you slowly? Is it still murder? And that's what they're doing here. They're killing these people very slow. And the agony of dying like that, they may be much more merciful if they did shoot them with the 45 and get it over with. The way I see it, if we're at the center of the second largest concentration of coal-fired power plants in the nation, and we have some of the highest unemployment and um, the highest poverty rates, we now have the shortest life expectancy, it, it affects our health, that it's not worth it for a handful of jobs to make everyone sick. And that's basically what's happening here. We have the highest lung cancer death rate in the state. We have the Shortest life expectancy, according to Harvard University, the American Cancer Society says we're number one in lung cancer deaths, we're number two in all cancers combined. I lost six neighbors in rapid succession to cancer, and I had cancer myself. Um, I saw a lot of people's pets getting sick with cancer, cows getting sick with cancer. There's a lot of toxicity associated with that. You get a lot of heavy metals, arsenic, cyanide, mercury, lead, just a whole slew, and then you have all the chemicals they use to process it with. The relationship between um, people in Appalachia and AEP and other um, electric companies, it's kind of like a domestic violence relationship. <laughs> I'm the only person who wants to be with you. I'm the only person who's going to give you a job and put a roof over your head. And by and large, a lot of people around here believe that. They're like, you know, yeah, coal does keep the lights on. And yeah, that is the only game in town. You know, particularly if you're not highly educated, you know, if you can't get a job at the university, you're going to work at one of the power plants or in one of the mines. Those are the options. Well, it was around 3 o'clock this afternoon when an explosion rocked a coal mine in Whitesville, West Virginia. Officials say at least six miners are dead, 21 others missing. It's the worst mining disaster in the U.S. in a quarter of a century. The government and the industry has created this monster, this enormous monster called profit. And so long as they don't bring any other industry in here, to what people we have are grasping at these jobs. It don't matter that we lost 29 people last week. There'll be another 150 people in line for that job next week, simply because there's nothing else, nothing else for grabbing onto here.
It's being called one of the worst U.S. mining disasters in recent history, and more tragedy just continues to roll in as that death toll continuously goes up. It now stands at 25, as I said. Four others are still missing, and rescue operations have been halted for the time being. And since 1993, as of now, we've lost 483 men from fatalities in the mine. And in the industry and the government keeps making reference to this here type of energy as cheap, cheap energy. But they've never went to the people who've lost people in the, in the mining industry and says, how do y'all feel about y'all's husband or son or father or brother for, for, for giving their life for the, the energy of the country? Uh, country. I'm pretty, pretty sure that they won't say that they're in favor of it, no. Οι επενδύσεις της American Electric Power στις ζούγκλες της Βραζιλίας είναι γνωστές στους κατοίκους της περιοχής. Παρόλο που η εταιρεία υποστηρίζει ότι με αυτόν τον τρόπο αντισταθμίζει τους ρήπους της και κάνει καλό στον πλανήτη, οι άνθρωποι που ζουν στη σκιά των εργοστασίων δεν είδαν καμιά βελτίωση στην καθημερινότητά τους. And so we didn't see a reduction in the pollutants during that time frame, or as a result of that um, regulation, what we saw was an increase if you look at what we're actually breathing here. The people that want to invest in the coal are cowards. They have no vision. We are basically condemning our children to problems that we're not willing to take the responsibility or the initiative to solve. I think that it sounds really good to preserve the rainforest and to preserve forests here in the United States. I mean, we should be preserving forests everywhere, but to preserve um, the biodiversity in one place while you're devastating the biodiversity in another place, it, that doesn't seem equal to me. That doesn't seem like a fair shake. It's, they're just shuffling the cards up and making it look like they're doing something. So I, my, I, I would like to say to the people in Brazil that my heart goes out to you and I'm glad that your community is being protected and I hope it lasts. But I'd like to say that I'd also like the same thing for my community. So você vai pescar na beira do rio aqui. Ele tinha um projeto, ele teve tempo de visitar e as viras do rio para tirar os pescadores que estavam pescando. Como é que, como é que ele vai viver? Né? Quer fazer uma prantinha ali, já está a polícia da Força Verde em cima, porque não pode tirar nada daqui, não pode fazer nada nem que a área seja tua. Se eu tenho um parmito na minha área e eu quero comer um guisado de parmito, eu tenho que roubar o que é meu, escondido deles, para mim poder comer. Eu não estou roubando, é meu. O povo do campo não pode viver mal, não pode trabalhar mais. Não tem essa autoridade dele trabalhar para si. Ele parece que trabalha de escravo. Ήταν το 2000 όταν μια βραζιλιάνικη μη κυβερνητική οργάνωση, η SPVS, άρχισε να αγοράζει με χρήματα της Chevron, της General Motors και της American Electric Power μεγάλες εκτάσεις ζούγκλας στην περιοχή της Κουαράκεσάμπα. Ο κονσέιτο δι' ουν βαλόρ οικονομικο εξιστέντη εν άρειας κονσερβάδας ε α γραντε αλτερνατίβα κι εξιστή ωρι παρα κι η σοσιαδάδη εντέντα que se você destruir todas as áreas, você vai destruir os próprios negócios. Então, você instituir valor econômico a uma área natural é praticamente a única saída que existe para que isso seja respeitado pela sociedade. E micras e tagênicas quinótitas que brisco de dias para esse jugla que junta a todas os, e dan-se na arquim me calomati a fitinexélixi. O topos dos tá prostatevotan. 
θα υπήρχε ανάπτυξη και δουλειά. Eles compraram fazendas, as fazendas. Não compraram chacras pequenas, não. Eles compraram fazendas, grandes portas. Nossa, foi uma expectativa, né? Porque eles chegaram assim e contrataram. Aí depois contrataram todos os funcionários que trabalhavam na fazenda. Ah, quando as pessoas chegou foi a expectativa, né? Achando que ia ser a mudança na, na, na comunidade, que ia vir cursos. Foi a esperança que eles deram, né? Que eles, não foi que a gente que eles deram a esperança, assim, porque eles tinham toda a expectativa, tanta ilusão que eles falavam, não vai acontecer isso, vai melhorar. É, é... Então eles plantaram essa ilusão. Mas o SPV, você comprou um sítio para cá e outro para cá, para cá dele, para cá dele. Então nós estamos no meio. Se a pessoa for querer derrubar um pau, os caras que cuidam do SPV, se ele for para o guarda florestal, aí o guarda florestal vem e prende a pessoa. É ruim, né? Porque uma, uma, uma lei de seca, a pessoa não pode cortar um pau. Não mata, não pode ter um cipó. Porque o pescador também precisa ter a cipó fazer balaio para falar o bagulho, né? Para ter a osca. E ele não pode fazer isso aí. Agora, esse tempo, meu, meu, meu colega está fazendo uma canoa ali, pescador também, para pescar. Daí os guardas foram pegar ele, ele escondeu-se. Daí os guardas passaram a mão no machado e cortavam a canoa dele. Partiam tudo. Como é que um pescador vai ver se tem uma canoa? Ambiental? Isso. Estão vendo a documentação dos senhores? O policial vai fazer a revista aí, ó. O que vocês pescaram lá? Absolutamente nada. Tem nada de peixe? Não. Deve ser essa daqui. Camarão vocês compraram de quem? Nós compramos do pescador aqui. Do tá grande já camarão aí? Aqui. Tem, tem alguns que vem grande. Hoje veio bastante misturado. Não, não veio tão né, amador. Esse é do nosso desse. Eu procuro só sempre a respeitar a legislação. Sim, aqui, Tonina, para nós é o seguinte, a, a, se você quer peixe, não é Tá ok, obrigado. Hoje não tem, porque tem algum vizinho aí que tem uma área de terra ali. E tinha uma valeta lá. E ele experimentou ver se criava um peixe ali e abriu de a pá, de, na, 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 aquela valeta ali. Eles chegaram e mortaram ele em 500 reais. Só porque fez um quadro lá de uns 5 metros quadrados ali para criar um peixe. Mortaram em 500 reais e prenderam para parar o serviço. Aí um dia eu vi ele lá na cidade, estava queixoso, digo, vá lá na Iapa, na Iapa lá em Morrete. E fala para eles, se você ganha 500 por mês, vai pagar 500 de multa, e o que, é que você vai comer? Fala que não vai pagar e acabou. Daí ele foi lá, cancelaram a multa, mas ele foi multado. Plantava a mandioca, né? plantava feijão, 
o que nós plantava bastante mesmo era mandioca, né? Porque a gente já se, se alimentava com aquilo, né? Porque nós fazia bastante farinha e vendia que nós comprava alimentação para casa. E nós tinha seis filhos para criar e todos trabalhavam na roça de nós. E depois que veio essa, esse negócio da SPVS aí, comprando terra, né? Que compraram. Daí as coisas foi piorando, daí já falaram que não, não podia roçar, não podia desmatar, né, mato, daí nós já não fomos plantando, não plantamos mais. Porque daí eles já vinham, davam multa, é, levavam as pessoas presas, daí parou a plantação, ninguém plantou mais. Não são as reservas que causam problema para a população. A população vem tendo problemas e, e, e representam... É, uma, uma região ainda muito pobre, não houve nenhum prejuízo que nós tenhamos conhecimento nesses 10 anos é, em relação a componentes sociais. Esse acampamento foi que é usado possivelmente para caçadores e para palmiteiros. Então nós encontramos esse barraco, eles chamam de barraco, é a primeira base deles. Eles vêm de manhã, param nessa base, fazem o fogo, esquenta o café e segue para tipo, a trilha deles. Né? Bom, geralmente os caçadores, quando tem a denúncia, é mais é, morador da região para consumo. Daí quando a gente pega ele com um animal abatido, o que a gente faz? A gente faz uma auto-infração para o cida, cidadão também. Então daí depois que a gente entrega a delegacia, tem que fazer ir na casa do cidadão para ver a situação dele. Se realmente ele necessita do, do, do animal. É geralmente, digamos, uma comparação com, com a droga, o uso de, de drogas. Às vezes o pessoal ali está tá, tá, tá traficando ali, correto? E alega que é para o consumo dele, porque para o consumo é, é, um, é uma pena, já para o tráfico seria outra. Então ele sempre alega aqui que é para o consumo dele, porém muitas vezes não é, entendeu? O horário da prisão foi 11h40 11 que me prendeu. Eu tava cortando a árvore, quando eu virei o rosto assim, já tava com o revólver apontado. Não tive como eu sair. Eu tava apontado meu irmão, já tava lá com uma espingarda também na cabeça também. Não teve como nós sair daí. Por que você tava tirando, fechando com a árvore, cortando? É, pra fazer a minha casa daí. Fazer a minha casa, porque... A gente não tem condição de ir na cidade e comprar madeira. Se nós temos no mato, se nós vivemos de cidade, estamos no mato ali, nós temos direito, que a gente preserva, mas a gente tem direito de ir lá e cortar uma, uma, duas, três árvores lá para poder fazer a casinha. E eles não aceitam isso daí. É que, inclusive esse dia aí, esse, a Força Verde teve aí e invadiu uma casa ali em cima ali. Porque até agora, hoje eu não sei ainda se existe essa lei para entrar dentro de casa, mas que eles entram, metem o pé na porta, entram mesmo e, e vão no quarto, remexem tudo, guarda-roupa, tudo. Arrombava a porta, entrava para dentro, se tivesse mulher eu entrasse assim mesmo de, de uma maneira, assustando várias vezes pessoas aí. Minha mãe desesperada, às vezes gritava porque falava para ele que, por que fazer aquilo. Pela barbaridade, tudo dentro de casa. Então, é desse jeito que eles agem aqui, a Força Verde. 
se vocês forem filmar ele, entrevistar, eles mudam o comportamento, tranquilo, bonito, conversa bonito, legal com, com vocês, assim. Mas se, a hora que eles vão agir nas comunidades, age diferente. Tem na, na tipo, é, por localidade, tipo, nem no bairro alto. Bairro alto, o pessoal só sobrevive de caça e palmito. Geralmente, quando a gente entra lá, já houve, já houve troca de tiro ali. O procedimento nosso é normal, a gente vai revidar, né? Geralmente você vai atirar, a gente, a gente faz de tudo para não atirar, né? Mas se ele respondeu com fogo, a gente vai, vai se defender também, né? A Força Verde é uma, um grupo para defender a propriedade privada, que, ou defender os crimes que, que acontecem aqui. Então não é, não é as comunidades que, que, que destroem. Temos muita fazenda de, de criação de gado de búfalo aqui e nada é feito. Não tem mata, o acesso dos búfalos, tá, acesso à floresta, tá, no acesso aos rios. Né? E não, ninguém faça que cumpra a legislação ambiental. Um por outro lado, o fazendeiro, esse fazendeiro aqui derrubou 16 alqueires de Mata Atlântica, de área preservada, e nem multa foi feita para ele. ele... Sem a existência de áreas de preservação em qualquer lugar do mundo, você vai ter contínuas perdas de biodiversidade. Isso algumas pessoas aceitam, outras pessoas não. Nós estamos procurando seguir a ciência e um norteamento em que é, a proteção de áreas... Eu não sou contra de proteger a floresta. Não sou contra. Mas eu sou contra de imprensar o pessoal e a comunidade para que ele não possa fazer nada dentro dessa área. Se a gente pega assim, aquelas, ar aquelas árvores, no contrato da SPVS pertence à TNC, pertence à GM, pertence à Chevron. Então, se eu for lá, e cortar uma árvore daquela lá, eu não estou cortando uma árvore do povo brasileiro. Eu estou cortando uma árvore que pertence a uma empresa estadunidense, uma empresa europeia, uma, uma, uma grande transnacionais. Isso daí é uma colonização. O povo brasileiro não poder usufruir daqueles recursos naturais porque pertence a uma, uma grande empresa que controla os recursos naturais em todo o canto. We've raised a lot of questions about that approach to regulating greenhouse gas emissions because of the potential for a cap and trade system to mirror the failures that led to the subprime mortgage crisis. Um, a lot of the trading would function as derivatives trading, which is the same kind of trading that was involved um, in the housing market crisis. Um, and what we see very clearly is that our regulatory capacity is just not up to snuff to deal with some of these challenges. 
15 million hectares per year is cleared and it goes on and on and the, and the forests are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. But what makes us believe that by putting a price on carbon uh, that you can actually stop these very powerful forces. So once you set a price for the market, if you believe in the private sector, you've got a lot of folks that are going to start spending a lot of time and a lot of energy coming up with ways to reduce emissions because the price signal has been sent. What we need to do is use policies to ensure that those that are polluting reduce their emissions, period. And what carbon trading does is it makes it a lot easier for those that are polluting to continue polluting.